Bonjour. Bonsoir. Buenas tardes, buenos dias, bon dia. As you can see, this is the uh, technology challenge uh, that we always have to overcome. Uh, welcome. We have, as of now, 1,000 registrations for the 2021 edition of Africa Open for Business. My name is Jibril Diallo. I'm president and chief executive officer of the African Renaissance and Diaspora Network, AIDN, which is hosting this summit for the third year in partnership with a certain number of organizations which we welcome here, UNFPA, UNDP, UN Women, the government of Costa Rica, UN Habitat, the government of Ethiopia, among other partners. Excellencies, honorable guests, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the third edition of Africa Open for Business. The theme of today's summit is women of Africa and the diaspora. Within this context, during the summit and after, we will explore why women are great leaders, how the leadership of women from Africa and from the diaspora can be encouraged, can be nurtured, and can be supported. And in this uh, connection, today's uh, summit falls within the framework of the campaign launched by the African Renaissance and Diaspora Network to give a red card to all forms of discrimination and violence against women and girls. This campaign was launched globally on the 6th of March, 2020. And it goes from the premise that women's rights are human rights that in the game of football, football being called soccer in the United States, a red card symbolizes a significant infraction of the rules. Our red card campaign, which is in partnership with UNDP, with UNFPA, with UN Habitat, with UN Women, with, UN, with FIFA, with the Conseil Présidentiel pour l'Afrique, of President Macron, this uh, red card therefore recognizes that gender-based discrimination and violence in all its manifestations are serious violations of human rights and as such should not have any place in today's world. If you have not already done so, I encourage you to go to the link www redcardpledge.com and join us in this campaign. We need 1 million signatures by the opening of the FIFA World Cup in November 2022 in uh, Qatar. By so doing, you will join us in creating a world where our sisters, where our daughters can wake up every day without fear. A world where women are truly free to make real decisions in all aspects of their lives. This summit is very important. Why? Because first of all, we want to showcase the potential and promise of Africa and the diaspora and highlight the positive narrative that should come out of the African continent. Secondly, we would like to illustrate innovative public-private sector partnerships for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Third point, we would like to empower women's leadership in the private sector, as well as all sectors of society. This point is particularly important because women continue to face a concrete ceiling 
in achieving equality. The 2020 edition of the UNDP Human Development Report says that 90% of all men and women hold some sort of bias against women. Let me repeat that. 90% of all men and women hold some sort of bias against women. According to the same report, the 2020 uh, edition of the Human Development Report published by the United Nations Development Program, 50% of all people, regardless of gender, believe that men can be better business executives and that men have a greater right to have a job in terms of scarcity. These beliefs are inconsistent with the reality. And I'd like to talk very quickly the experience that we've gone through with uh, COVID-19. The response to COVID-19 is indicative of that. In countries where the leadership of women has been well represented, those countries have been more likely to contain the spread of the COVID-19 virus. And those countries have been on track towards recovery. On the other hand, countries that have been <clears throat> either cold or hostile to the leadership of women, those countries have been less effective in addressing COVID-19. The situation faced by women of African descent, namely women of the diaspora, is even more serious because it is further, further exacerbated. That situation is further exacerbated by racial inequality. Therefore, we hope that, this is my final point, we hope that uh, the summit will serve as the beginning of the dialogue and not the end. And we hope that the relationship that will be built among these 1,000, no less than 1,000 registered uh, summit uh, participants, that these relationships and connections will reinforced, uh, will be reinforced in order to lead to the development of opportunities for better business and a better world. And that uh, communities made at the summit, commitments made at the summit, these commitments will encourage representation of women and girls from Africa and from African descent in leadership positions in the private sector and other areas. So I wanted to just again, welcome you. We're very, very excited in this time of uh, the UN General Assembly for you to take time off your very busy schedule uh, to be with us uh, today. With that, I would like immediately uh, to go to our first uh, opening uh, speaker who is a core organizer of uh, the summit, the uh, executive director of uh, UNFPA, Dr. Natalia Kanen, please.